Hello everyone, my name is Holly and welcome to your monthly dose of brand new book releases. Today we are ringing in the new year and talking about books coming out in January 2024. January and February are typically some of the busiest months for publication and that's definitely the case here for January. My goodness, you guys better prepare yourselves, get your Goodreads up, bring up a Word document, pen and paper, whatever you got, because we have some really exciting books today. In fact, I want to keep this intro short because I have so many here on my list, over 20, so we're going to be going all rapid fire. Like, if this is the type of content that you're looking for, I do these every single month and have been for a few years now, focusing on fantasy, sci-fi, and horror. I am always here to make your TBR even bigger. It's my job and I love it. Starting on January 2nd, we have that time I I got drunk and saved a demon. This is a republication. Orbit Books picked it up and is giving it the traditional treatment. In fact, they will be publishing all three books in this series. We'll be talking about those other two in later months, but for now, this is book one in the Mead Mishaps series, and I have read it. I know a romance hater reading romance, who even am I? <laughs> but I wanted something light and cozy, and this fit that budget. So it is a romantic rom com about a human and a demon. We have Cinnamon. Yes, that's her name. She lives in a small village on her family's spice farm. One day, she gets drunk and accidentally saves a demon, as the title doesn't leave out, from a witch who has enslaved him. Um, there's a ton of spice. It's hilarious. Sex scenes make me laugh no matter how serious they are, so it was honestly kind of fun. Um, it is set in a medieval setting, which is my favorite, so look out for this at the beginning of January. On January 9th, we have Mislaid and Parts Half Known. Very fitting. It's coming out on the 9th, and it's the ninth book in the Wayward Children series. A series that I feel like has been going on my entire life. A lot of the books in the series can be read as standalones, but definitely not this one. This takes place right after the events of Lost in the Moment and Found. The entire series revolves around children as they stumble across portals into other worlds and, well, they kind of get lost. We finally really get to see the threads of all the different novellas coming together here, which will lead us into the finale. That's right. I'm pretty sure the next book will mark the end, and whether that's a happy ending or not, we shall see. Speaking of happy endings or not, The Slain, Divine, the third and final book in the Vagrant Gods trilogy, a book I might have indulged in already. This is an adult epic fantasy and one of my most anticipated books of 2024 about a prince who must take back his kingdom that was taken away from him by any means necessary. If you're looking for a book that involves gods who interact with humans and cool shadow magic, I know one of you in my Discord was looking for this type of book. I recommended this one to you, so... The finale is coming out next month, so it's a great time to dive in. In my official review, it will be coming out in January. Somewhere in the Deep, a YA adventure story set on an island steeped in lore, mystery, and monsters. In fact, our protagonist is a monster fighter in the popular underground pit who um, wants to be free, but to do this, they must go on a quest to go into the caves where they might not ever come out again. I love stories like this. It sounds intense and exciting with high stakes, and though I love my epic fantasy, with huge worlds. I also really like stories that are centered on like a really small area. A bit claustrophobic maybe. I could be wrong, but with the words underground and caves, the story seems condensed and I can really get into those. So look out for this on the 9th. Alrighty everyone, let me take a deep breath because on January 16th, we have 10 books releasing on my list. It's the busiest day in publishing for January, that's for sure, so let's begin with. Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands, a book two in the Emily Wilde series apparently pushing some boundaries because early reviews have stated that this is far better than the first. And I know readers loved the first book, so that's great to hear. This is a fantasy all about fairies. We follow Emily and Wendell after mysterious fairies begin appearing across Cambridge, disturbing their day-to-day -day life, and this basically sets off their next adventure. It is written in a journal format, which is really fun. Um, the sequel brings um, new fairies, new characters, new horrors that those new characters have to deal with, and a dog apparently. And you know, I'll read it just for the dog. Escaping Mr. Rochester. For those of you who love the classics, you're going to be happy to hear that we have a new modernized edition. This is a YA retelling of Jane Eyre. The author takes the idea of Rochester being the villain of this old story and brings it to life, making him even more sinister. And Jane and Bertha have to escape his clutches. Um, I'm not 
much of a classic reader myself, but knowing there's a new diverse option that can bring new readers in, I'm always happy to see that. It sounds fun with a little added dose of romance. You can't go wrong with adding this one to your wish list. Pillar of Ash. Oh man, it's finally here. The highly anticipated conclusion to the Hall of Smoke saga, which will now be a total of four books. If you haven't seen all of the covers together, I'm going to put it on the screen. It's very satisfying to look at, and I'm sure to have all of them lined up on your shelves just a chef kiss. This is a Viking mythology inspired fantasy that is super fun and super unique following a healer and the daughter of a warrior priestess. If you're looking for the perfect adventure to escape to, I highly recommend these, especially if you're a series binger like I am, then you won't have to wait long. Unbound. This one sounds really, really cool and I really love the cover. Um, it's a gender bent reimagining of Beauty and the Beast set against the backdrop of Irish mythology and folklore. So imagine Beauty and the Beast, but in the like Irish countryside with like crumbling castles. Like what? That sounds wonderful. So the female protagonist plays the role as Beast. Um, it says it's for fans of Rebecca Ross and Hannah Winton. I think those are great comparisons for a book like this. It's probably going to be really lyrical, simply structured, and it's a debut, which is exciting. A Place for Vanishing, a haunted house story with real ghosts. I love these kinds of books so much. I will absolutely be trying this one out myself. Um, our main character, Libby, struggles with her mental health and her mother decides to move her into her childhood childhood home in hopes for a fresh start, but of course, uh, this is a paranormal. There's apparently strange masks used for seances, there's bug-infested rooms, it's creepy, gross, and I'm excited for it. Um, bonus is this cover, like, they did a great job. A Drop of Venom. This is a young adult novel being published through Rick Riordan Presents, and it's a Medusa retelling, but it is set in an Indian mythology-inspired world. We have our young main character who has been hidden in this uh, floating temple by her family to be kept safe, but after some dark and violent events, she is actually thrown off the island and is bitten by snakes, which begins her serpent um, transformation, and thus begins her journey to find her family and to try and stay alive from the monster slayer that is hunting her, whom she may or may not have feelings for. <laughs> Obviously, if you love the story behind Medusa, this is the book for you. I think the story sounds creative and unique, and you just can't choose wrong with a cover like that. So Let Them Burn, a brand new debut sapphic Jamaican-inspired YA fantasy. There's dragons and gods, and it takes place in a post-war fantasy world. Um, we're following two main characters who are sisters, Farron, who is chosen by the gods, and this gave her the ability to free her people from this dragon-riding empire. But a few years later, her sister, Alara, is suddenly chosen by those enemies of their island, the dragons themselves, and the gods proclaim that the only way to break this bond is to kill Alara. So apparently one sister has to kill the other sister. How in the hell do two sisters deal with all of that craziness? I have no clue, but I would love to find out. Where You End, a new dark thriller hitting stores soon. Um, the plot centers around a set of mirror twins, Kat and Jude, another sisterly story. Uh, Kat wakes up from a coma after being in a car accident and has lost all of her memories, and Jude sets out to fill in her memories, but not all is what it seems, and maybe Jude isn't being quite honest. It is set in the 1980s, so like pre-modern technology, which I think is going to make things more interesting. Um, a mystery-filled sisterhood psychological thriller with some pretty dark elements. Sounds like it could be really entertaining. Okay, everyone, we're finally moving on to January 23rd. We have Feybound. This is the first book to a brand new trilogy by the author who wrote The Final Strife. Um, as the title suggests, this is a book with Fey, but most importantly, there's a cute, adorable, animal companions, and that's really all I needed to hear. No, there's actually really cool other things as well. It's set in a world shaped by a thousand year long war between different elven tribes. Now, I have seen reviewers mention if you loved Fourth Wing, you will probably love this. Um, we are probably going to get a lot of books in 2024 that are riding that fourth wing wave, but don't mark this one off. This author is fantastic, writes beautifully, and has her own unique stories to tell, and I think an elven fey twist is just enough to make this one stand on its own. Next up, I have Womb City. If you're looking to start your year with a 
new dystopian, you have that here. An African dystopian science fiction mix and an eye-catching cover to go with it. Now, let me tell you what this is about because it sounds wild. We have Nila, who appears to be living a very fulfilling dream life. However, her life isn't so great behind closed doors as her every move is monitored by her policeman husband with the microchip that's implanted in her. Well, she is suddenly involved in a weird sounding car accident and in desperation commits a crime, buries the body, but then the victim emerges as a ghost and haunts her putting those she loves in danger. This sounds absolutely wild and thrilling and one hell of a ride. Like, I need to read this myself. The Last Immortal. Wow, do I love this cover. And But gosh, I need to see like a physical copy of this because I bet it's even more beautiful in person. So hopefully the book is good, but it sounds it. Um, it sounds just as brutal as the cover looks. It's a dark gothic horror. We have Lady Romelia who was convicted of the murder of her parents that she doesn't remember doing and is sent to a insane asylum. After years of being tortured there, she is saved by a man who declares that she is to be his wife and is swept away into a new life that involves some secret society. Another book that just sounds wild as heck, um, maybe that's the trend for 2024 books that just go crazy. It is, it is very dark in terms of blood and body horror apparently, so if you're squeamish, maybe think twice, but this is probably going to be it for a very specific kind of person, so I wanted to mention it today. Moving on to January 30th, we have The City of Stardust. I'm going to be reading this one in January, which I'm very excited about. So a slight spoiler for my January TBR. This is an adult fantasy that seems to be in the same vein as like Alex Iharo or maybe even like Lainey Taylor. Just like a beautiful, maybe creepy fantasy about an entire generational family that is cursed where each generation a family member is taken by a woman as payment owed to her. Our main character Violet is determined in some way to break this curse and I'm absolutely enthralled on how she's going to do that. Um, it sounds like a fascinating mystery. I'm going to leave this one here as I'll be talking about it again soon. The Invocations. This is a dark YA horror thriller that follows three young women as they try to solve a murder mystery. Um, the story involves witches and monsters and magic, which, which honestly makes it possibly a good read for the winter. When I think of winter, not only do I think of epic fantasy, but I think of like gothic fantasy as well, while it's like pouring snow outside. I think it's very fitting. This is also supposed to be a very girl power kind of story. I'm, I'm kind of getting like Powerpuff Girls all of a sudden, but who knows? Maybe an emo version of that. That would be fun. But very feminist about strong female characters. This is also a standalone, which are always very nice to read in between those long fantasy series. So look out for this one on the 30th of January. Oh, and that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, liking this video really helps me out and lets me know um, that, hey, maybe you found out a book in today's video that you didn't know about before and now are interested in it. And I hope that's the case. In fact, tell me in the comments which book that was and tell me a book that I might have missed because I can't talk about all of them. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you all have a great new year and until we meet again, happy reading.